Shalom and welcome to our Take 12 devotion with the Holy Spirit on this blessed day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now some of you may not agree that it's a blessed day, but remember it's our attitude that will determine the magnitude of our day. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just praising the Lord. Remember every day when you wake up, rejoice in the day. Hallelujah. And you shall be glad in it. Praise God. So, I want to take you today to Psalms and Psalms 119. Hallelujah. Oh, there's so much. And one day perhaps we have to do a series on these Psalms, but Let's come to Psalms 119 and starting from 103 to 105. And let me read to you. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. And your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hallelujah. Now, when <clears throat> the writer here, and like I mentioned before, even though we believe that many rabbis, rabbinic scholars believe that Israel, the scribe, is the one who composed this, this uh, psalm, but nevertheless, I believe that Ezra abstracted many Davidic writings, okay? You can see the, the Davidic linguistic nature in the Psalms here. And many of these writings are Davidic in nature and in essence. And I believe that Ezra uh, as a scribe have composed them together. So... Regardless of who the author is, he says here, the author says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, they really did that literally back in those days where the, the rabbi would uh, place the scroll in front of the people of the, the assembly in the synagogue or in the courts of the temple. And they would really wipe a, a very uh, thin layer of honey on the scroll. And people would just line up and they would come and they would touch the scroll where the honey was. And they would put that finger that touches that part of the scroll. And they would put that finger to their mouth and they would confess, Your word is sweeter than honey to me. Hallelujah. They did that literally, guys. And, you know, today, it shows us in comparison how we have failed to treasure the Word of God, how we have, you know, failed to treat the Word of God as something that is so precious and so sweet. It's sweeter than honey. Then, it says... In 104 there, through your precepts or through what I can derive, the principles, the, the wisdom of your word, that's what precepts are, I get understanding. We can only receive what I call the fullness of understanding when we understand the fullness of God's words. And the more we know God's words, the more understanding we have. Not just only understanding of scripture, but understanding of moral principles, of spiritual dynamics, or in general, just understanding life itself and understanding the ways of God and the eternal. So, through your principles, we receive understanding and our understanding will grow amen 
And by that, it says here in Psalms 104, Therefore, because I have such understanding that comes from your word, I hate every false way. Or if I may rephrase that, I would not walk down the wrong way or choose a wrong path or make a wrong decision because I have understanding from your word. Your word give light to me. And that's where we come to now in Psalms 105. 119, 105. It says here that your word, and now here we see an allegory of the word being portrayed as a lampstand. Now, back in biblical times, remember, they don't have street lamps, they don't have torch lights, they don't have electricity. And the only means to have a light in a dark place is to have a lamp. Alright, and it says that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So, the difference here between feet and path is we need to have practical application step by step every day of our life through the word of God. Right? We go through life and in everyday situation, we need to apply the Lamb of God's Word to shine that we will know what is the next step to take. And after that, what would be the step after that? You get what I'm saying, people of God? We, we need to apply God's Word because God's words give us counsel, give us wisdom, give us principles on how to make decisions, how we are to act in a situation, how we are to confront or whatever challenges, how we are to respond to life. And so, it is a practical light for our every daily step. That's why it's a lamb to my feet. And on a wider scale, it also serves as a light in our path, just as it lit up the very step that we are to take it also lit up or it gives us a vision of the direction we are walking into, the light to our path. Do you get that? The word direct us step by step and the word reveal to us the destiny we are walking toward. To. It's the light to our path. It lightens up the path. It shows you, it shows you what is ahead of you in the near future and sometimes uh, the word can also give you uh, for example when you read the book of revelation it gives you a whole eschatological perspective of the end times and you know what will happen to you and i the church in the last days because the word shines all the way until the very end so the Word of God, and I'm seeing this in the vision as I'm speaking to you right now, the Word of God can act as a light that will shine from the very beginning to the very end of your life. Hallelujah. Now, look at Psalms 119, verse 130 here. You see that word again? That complements what I'm saying in 105. The entrance of your words gives what? Light. You see that, people of God? The entrance of your words give us light. Hallelujah. And it gives understanding to the simple. Or in another word, the word of God is not complicated. Sometimes theologians, theologians have a tendency to complicate the word. The word is written for simple people and is written for simple understanding and simple application. Hallelujah. And the word of God, as, as we read it, and as we apply it, and as we believe in it, we treasure it, we apply it, we follow its precepts, it gives us understanding. And it serves as a torch light in our life that was shines in the dark places. What are the dark places? The obscurities of life. And sometimes uh, we can come to a dead end in a situation. It can be a business, it can be a work, it can be a relationship, it can be a ministry, it can be anything. 
and we need to have God's direction and that's where we come to the word that's where we come in prayer that's where we ask God to show us some principles and sometimes God may show you a passage that becomes a rama word that serves as a guidance or a direction sometimes it can be as direct as yes or no from what you are reading in the word because the word is alive hallelujah the word is a light to us Oh, praise God. We have heard many times that the Word of God is like a sword. The Word of God is like a fire. It's like a water. It's like a hammer. Today, I want you to hear this. The Word of God is a light. And the Word of God shines in the dark places of indecisions. It, it, it shines in the dark places of uncertainties, of doubts. Uh, even in a place of desperation and hopelessness, the Word of God shines and it reveals to us the promises of God and it reveals to us, the hear this, it reveals to us the outcome. And what is the outcome for every child of God? You are an overcomer. Did you hear that? That is the outcome of every situation we face and regardless of what that is, whether it can be a disease or it can be even a demonic manifestation, whatever it is, people of God, whatever giant we face, the outcome for every believer is that at the end of the day, we are overcomers. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And so... I want to decree this word to you today that the more you read the word, the more light you have. Because the word of God is an entrance of light. It gives light. Hallelujah. The entrance of your words gives light. Can you just imagine that? That every time you read the word, it's like a big torch light is being sh shone into your soul. I will use a flood light, not a torch light, because there's so much light from the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. And your word is indeed a lamb, O oh Lord. It's sweeter than honey. And may we treasure your word every day, Lord. May we not only read it as an obligation, but may we read it as a joy and a delight. That it will be so sweet to us. And the more we taste of it, the more we will desire it, Lord. And the more we come to your word, the more your word gives light to us. And it will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And Father, I bless the one hearing this. In Jesus' name, Amen.